So we often like to describe things with numbers because we inherently see them with, as some sort of uh, objective, uh, in that they are objective. So for example, there's also the societal drive to try and tackle hard problems with numbers because, again, numbers themselves uh, indicate some sort of objectivity. However, the, there's also this societal, societal trend, we'll put it, to quantify people and their success. So, for example, you have school teachers and they are evaluated based on the standardized test scores of their students. You have police officers who are evaluated based on the number of arrests that they make. And perhaps uh, some researchers would know this, but, but as researchers, we are evaluated on the number of citations we have and the money that we are able to bring in to the university. But these are hard problems. And by, while we make it easier to be objective by looking at the numbers, how we're quantifying success of these different professions and people, we're ignoring the fact that in the, in the first place that, that these are hard problems to solve and likely are not able to really be distilled in this way. Oops. So let's take, let's go back one, uh, but let's take the story then uh, to sort, as a sort of proof by example of two professors. You have Professor A and you have Professor K. So Professor A has grown up in this lovely sunny town in Florida with a middle class atomic family, a house with a quite large garden, as you can see from the picture, and a white picket fence, and it's Florida, so we know there's a pool even if, even if we can't see it. And she, uh, as she graduated as valedictorian of her class in high school and went on to have a fully funded college experience. During that time, she published her first paper as an undergraduate, uh, which won a Best Paper Award, and continued on from there to study with the leading researcher in the field that she had chosen. She was funded through her extra schooling with a prestigious National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship Award, and went on to become a professor at a an R1 institution, which in the United States is a designation for the top, for a top research university in the United States. All right, so by all accounts, it seems like Professor A has been successful. And then we have Professor K. So with these illustrations, perhaps you can see where this is going. Professor K was pressured to study something that she was not interested in. In particular, it had to do with medicine and her parents wanted her to be a doctor. And hating the classes that she was enrolled in, Professor K turned to classic sorts of video games to find meaning in her life. She struggled with the, the demands of the classes she didn't enjoy and considered dropping out entirely from the program. She changed her major four times and finally, after this fourth attempt, she was able to graduate. At the end, she found a PhD program that would accept her and at the end of the first semester, after having struggled throughout undergraduate because it took her six years to graduate, at the end of the first semester of her PhD program, her father was killed in a tragic car accident. And before her mother could see perf future Professor K graduate, her mother was also killed in a separate but just as tragic car accident. However, Professor K is also a professor at an R1 university. And so, if you're going to put a number on me as both Professor A and Professor K, for this proof by example, you'll see that if you evaluate me as a researcher, these two people will be the same. But these are very different narratives. 
uh, to tell. One is a story of privilege that uh, preordained success in some ways, where this, this road to, really the road to success has, has been paved by privilege. In the other is a more of a struggle of trial and error and the, de the desire to succeed and overcome different obstacles in her life to be resilient. But in particular with Professor K is this notion of trial and error in the narrative of Professor K that is affecting not only the narrative of my life, but also in my research. And so I have two pieces of advice that may be help, that I've discovered through my life and through my research that may be helpful when you yourselves are faced with some adversity. The first is to consider the significance of a single failure. Because life is noisy. There is a, a lot of randomness that the one failure does not mean that you are a failure. It's not scientifically significant, and it shouldn't define you. And so in my research, this is a, an image of a game called Hearthstone, which is a card game. I try in my research, which I work in AI and a type of AI called evolutionary computation and reinforcement learning, I try to create better algorithms to solve bigger and harder problems. Well, with these decks, we are trying to, we are, with this game, Hearthstone, we're trying to find from a big space of possible cards, what are the best ways to combine them? And this is relevant because these decks need to be evaluated. So, if I look at the value of one deck, I may look at what does it win or not? And how many turns does it take to win? So I play that card deck against another player once, and I see that in this case it takes 10 turns, but this deck is good, it's valuable, and it won. So I should keep it. But that same deck, when you are playing it against the same opponent and player, you may find that it wins in, or it loses in one turn, which is a significant loss. And so what I need to do in my research is then evaluate these decks a large number of times, close to 400, uh, to decide whether or not this difference is significant. There's a, before we get to this next slide, there's another example of famous papers written by researchers that at the time were not famous, that were rejected from the conferences and journals to which they eventually, um, or to which they had applied. And these, these papers are things that you may read about in your biology textbooks or your computer science textbooks. And so again, with this narrative of a single failure is, is not necessarily indicative of a problem with you. That it may behoove you to keep trying. So something else that I see in my research and that I've seen in my life is that there can be many definitions of success. And so I work with a type of algorithm that doesn't just look at one type of success, but looks at success over a span of uh, dimensions, so a way, a large variety of different ways of defining what success means. And so in this same game, I'll go back to this for a second. In this same game, Hearthstone, we talked about the deck evolution, but we also look at gameplay strategy, and what that means is you could play aggressively or you could play much more controlled. And we find in, in the experiments that we've been running that instead of, if we're not searching for the best aggressive strategy and we're not searching for the best control strategy, but instead searching along a variety of different measures of success that we find strategies that, would perf that perform better than either of these aggressive or control strategies would have alone. And so from my experience, 
as Professor A and Professor K in my life, I can say that, and from my research findings, that trial and error is important, and I would encourage you to continue to explore different avenues of uh, what it means for you to personally be successful and to be prepared uh, for some singular failures and not take it as, a, as an indication of your value. That success takes many attempts sometimes, and it's taking to, to really define yourself and or to be successful with your research results, that it can take many attempts, and there are many different ways to evaluate success. So perhaps we're back to the original examples of teachers, police officers, um, and we'll leave researchers aside that we should likely be having a bigger conversation about what it means for all of us to be in all of these professions to be evaluated. Is it right or fair to have uh, these metrics for those individuals? And so really what I'm trying to get at is that through my life and through my work, I found that you really don't know the value of a given strategy until you've evaluated it many, many times. Thank you very much.